Hey, Dave LaCalia with Head Games Motorworks, and welcome back to another episode. Today, I got Fernando Avila's 2JZ head. He makes 600 horsepower. It's a streetcar IS300, and he had a, a rod failure, and we're going to inspect all his parts and give you an idea of what we're looking for. Check it out. All right, so to give you a quick overview of what we got going on here, this is Fernando's 2JZ GE head, VVTi. We did our pocket port, which is our 2J-4 package. Comes with a pocket port, bronze guides, valve job, mill and assembly. For parts, we did a GSC stock size intake and exhaust valve and GSC S1 cams, along with a GSC Beehive spring kit. So the first thing we're gonna check out is the camshaft. The camshaft tells a lot of the story about what we're gonna see going downhill on this head. Come over here. All right, so when we check out the camshaft, first thing we're looking at is the journal. And you see in the journals that there is a lot, a lot of wear here. Now, this is because, again, it took a rod out. The rod's gonna supply the camshaft with oil. It goes with that oil. Needless to say, there's gonna be some debris in there and it's gonna go through. But if you look at the lobe, the lobe is pretty perfect except for these marks you see on the side of the lobe. What are they? Well, these are from when the cam is slamming against the bucket. And is it supposed to slam? No, it's not supposed to slam. It, these are designed to slide across the bucket. And when you're gonna slam, that means that the bucket is fluttering and it's out of control. So you can see these lines here, here. This is a sign of valve float because it said they're designed to just slide. That's the whole premise behind all of this. And when they don't do that, then they, they make some really weird markings. And now you know that you have a problem. Look at this journal, this journal is pretty bad as well. That's pretty bad, you can feel that with your finger. So, all in all, the cams are in decent condition, but I guess we're gonna have to take a look at the bucket these are non-DLC coated buckets. Let's see what they look like. All right, we're gonna check out these, these buckets or lifters. I said everybody calls them something different. Now I'll remind you that these went without oil. In two ways they went without oil. Because first part is you have to remember that there was some valve float. And now valve float, what it's gonna do is it's gonna exceed the oil strength thickness. So there is some markings you can see on here. They're not destroyed, but they do have some serious markings in them. I feel like we could polish these out. We usually polish just to make sure that we're gonna make the right decision, if we're gonna replace or not, because these things are kind of expensive. Uh, but they also went through a rod failure, so it did go without oil for a little bit, and some debris. So if you also see this, see this one is, uh, is a little shiny. You can feel that with your finger. You can tell the bucket was rotating because it has that rotational. You want the bucket to rotate, but you also don't want it to slam the center here. As you can see, it started taking it off. And once that starts, that's when it starts just eating the bucket up. And now, this is not a billet cam problem. This is a failure that started other places in the engine and ended up taking the buckets out or taking the camshaft out. And now, some people might want to blame the cam, but this is actually a, a, an oil starvation issue. All right, so next we're going to check out the valve. The valves tell a big story because they tell what is getting beat up, right? So if you look at this intake valve here, you'll see on the 45, there's a huge step on the 45 degree angle. And what it's doing is it's beating the 45 into the valve seat. And when this happens, the valve assembly is going to go up. And when it goes up, you lose spring pressure, you lose lash, and then eventually it becomes a failure. On the exhaust side, we also see there is a little bit of a ledge. Now, I don't know how Fernando runs his car, if he beats the crap out of it. I mean, it only makes 600, so um, it should survive quite a bit of a beating. So we have a concentricity checker. We're gonna look at the exhaust valve. So all the exhaust valves were bent. You see here, close to five thousandths. This thing was like way wobbly. Now, it took out all the exhaust valves, 
uh, because it we had a failure and there was also some valve float and that could also cause a a bent valve situation. Core inspection. We're going to check out the cylinder head, see what we find in here. There's a lot of answers here as well. They tell everything kind of tells a part of the story, right? So we're going to look at the journals first. In the journals you'll see somewhere. Now with an explosion like we had, like like Fernando had, you would think it everything would have just destroyed the cylinder head. But in reality, he got really lucky because all the cam journals can be polished up and reused. You can use the core, the bucket holes are, look good. Uh, we can try one in here and see if everything kind of turns real nice. This is a very important thing as long as everything turns. So we flip the head over. You can see it, we're going to say number one probably is the, the guy that came apart. Now we could just blend this in, this will be nothing. But if you also come back here, you'll see a lot of heat. So heat changes the color of the chamber. It'll change almost like it turns into a, um, like a dusty type of look. That's where you know there's a lot of heat. There was some water in here. And we're going to make sure that the head's straight. We take a straight edge, we put it across here, see if they rock. We can also take a feeler gauge and put a feeler gauge underneath of it. And stick it under there. Try not to put any pressure. So you can put it on this side so you can see it a little bit better. I think he's good. Last but not least, the valve spring. Now, I was going to put it on the uh, spring tester, but we found that every time we used this particular Beehive spring kit, we had an issue with valve float. We're not a huge fan of the, it's a GSC Beehive. Um, you know, I'm friends with them guys. I love them to death, but just like any kind of relationship, sometimes you don't love everything they do. And this would be one of them. I, I wish this thing would just go down and, in history, uh, we've used we tr used to have it an offer in a in packages for the 2JZ. Uh, just in the 2J, I just cannot get this thing to behave well, and I cannot get it to not valve float. Uh, it only makes 600. The spring pressure should be perfect for it, but it just doesn't work. So just because it's made for your car doesn't mean that it'll just work. And we know that they're installed at the correct height. They should have the correct pressure and the valve spring probably just acts like a slinky in there and moves around and does all kinds of crazy stuff. So, it's my opinion. I'm not a big fan. You take that as you is. So, in retrospect, what we're gonna do to fix Fernando up is we're gonna fix his chamber, we're gonna refresh the valve job, we're gonna polish all of his cam journals, we're gonna polish the cam journals on the, on the camshafts, we're gonna take the spring, we're gonna chuck it, we're gonna polish his buckets, see what we have to replace, see what we don't, and uh, we're going to place some valves. And then this guy's going to be ready to rock and roll, beat the crap out of his car again, do some donuts, whatever he does. Take a look next time. Appreciate you guys watching. Like and comment below. Be sure to subscribe. Thank you. See you later.